Good morning. Welcome to Terra at Home. I'm here with Jillian Love. We brought her into our studio mm -hmm. from the LCBO Millcroft, and uh, thanks for coming in. So You're welcome. we're going to talk about wines today. Yes. And obviously, you know, there are some people know, you know, a little bit of wine, but a lot about a wine, but. So we're bringing in some labels of wine that some people just, they have a hard time identifying what varietal it yeah, is. Yeah, it can be really intimidating yeah. if you don't know, I mean, depending on your wine knowledge, and it doesn't really matter, you could be very knowledgeable, but sure. some of these wine labels can be very confusing. Mm -hmm. And you think, what am I drinking? Like, what am I buying here? And yeah. how, what's the flavor profile? So I just brought a few selections of these types of wines so mm -hmm. we could go through and tell you the, pla uh, the flavor profile. And actually. we're talking whites today, right? Whites, yeah. yes. And, and we're talking nice springtime patio mm -hmm. sippers, mm -hmm. great food wines great mm -hmm. um, expression of fruit and aromatics. Mm -hmm. So over at, uh, we'll start over here at the end here, and mm -hmm. this is a Sancerre, which is from Loire, France. The grape variety is a Sauvignon Blanc. So Sauvignon Blanc tends to be very grassy, herbaceous, lots of gooseberry, lots of grapefruit, mm -hmm. great with vegetarian pizzas, goat cheese dishes. It's a great sipper. It's got an amazing um, acidity to it. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. the acidity is something that you want to cut through certain oils and foods. So okay. you definitely need that. So and that's the thing when it comes to wine, a lot of times that you've got, again, you, you have another name for, yes. you just need to right. sometimes ask somebody. So <laughs> this one is actually a grape variety. This is from Spain. It's an Albarino, and mm -hmm. the Albarino is the grape variety. The uh -huh. style of this wine is a little more of that stoned peach fruit, very soft, very easy drinking, mm. lovely, refreshing, um, very clean. So a nice Perfect alternative to patio Pinot Grigio. In the summer. Yes. Yeah, Pinot Grigio. There mm -hmm. you go. Okay. Great patio sipper. Mm -hmm. The next one is a Pecorino, and mm -hmm. um, this comes. It gets. It's an Italian from the Abruzzo region, mm -hmm. and it gets the name Pecorino from the Pecorino uh, sheep. I, well, this is the thing because <laughs> a lot of times people think when they hear Pecorino, they think of cheese. The Pecora because sheep. again. It's and the, cheese. the cheese is coming has, from the sheep. The it has no affiliation, actually. Which pecorino the, cheese and pecorino wine are totally different. Totally different. It's just right. a funny thing. Go figure. Uh, so that's where it could get a little confusing. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying, like the little sheep would eat the grapevines yeah. and expose the grapevines to the sun. So kind of, they got the pecorino. It's the grape variety taken after that. the name of the sheep. That's awesome. Yes. So lovely little <laughs> wine. Uh, a vino verde is mm -hmm. from Portugal, and it's a it's a green wine. I was it's, say it's very clear. It's very clear because the grapes are harvested very early on. Okay. So they pick the grapes when they're almost in a green state. So mm -hmm. the result is a very fresh and almost um, effervescent. So it's almost got a spritziness to really? it. Really? Cool. So really lovely with seafood mm -hmm. or just on its own. Very light and crisp. You you, you know, it's almost like water. It, it but just it's all like it's a very refreshing okay. and, and nice. Okay. The next one is a Moscato. Moscato. And the Moscato grape is very aromatic. Lots of lychee fruit. It mm. tends to be dry so great with fruit dishes yes. if you're having um, you know fruit or flan or trifles mm -hmm. desserts great for somebody who's not a real wine drinker mm -hmm. because it does have a little bit less Easy. alcohol too okay okay mm -hmm. all right very good now we'll shift all the way over to this side the Solomon um, is a groovy it's called groovy Gruner and the great <laughs> variety is Gruner Vetliner it's from Austria mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love this wine because it's got a lot of white pepper and very fresh it's a great seafood wine as well, great with summer dishes, mm -hmm. really easy drinking, um, and I love that nice white pepper mm -hmm. uh, to it, and that wet stone, sort of stoned fruit, mm -hmm. so it's really nice. Okay. It's really inexpensive, $10. Well, see, that's the thing, too, is that a lot of times, again, especially when you're getting into some of the whites, you know, people are worried when looking at price points like that, like, really, like, a, a $10, is it going to be any good? You can get an $8 wine that's yeah. just as nice as a $20 mm -hmm. one. I mean, really, mm -hmm. the fun in finding wine, Leslie, is finding a good wine at a good price. You I don't agree. have to spend a fortune. And people, when they do, they're like, that's kind of their staple wine. They have, you know, have some some reds like that. They have some whites like that. And then when people come over, that's their easy drinking wine, That's right. right. Yeah, yes. I love that. Of course. That's great. And it's great to have, you can buy two or three of them and put them away. Sure. And sure. it's really inexpensive. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And of course, in a lot of these, when people are making uh, sangria, and you're using a white. Yes. Um, what, for example, what would you recommend out of all of these? I mean, we haven't gone through completely all of them yet, but um, would you me recommend for you can use any, any of, of these wines in sangria? Go. Any of them yeah. would work beautifully. Yeah. And so that's, that's the, the thing. Nice thing. Again, you don't. If you're drinking a sangria, I think a lot of people are like, oh, we'll just get the cheapest one. You'll never taste it. But you are tasting it, so you want to get something that still yes. is is that you like. Yes. Like you like the flavor. And I of think it. the most important thing when you're doing a sangria is making getting the spritziness and the mm -hmm. acidity there. Like mm -hmm. you have to have a little bit of acidity. Okay. You have a fat and flabby wine yes. overpowers. Okay. You have to have that that balance. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Good point. Okay. So let's move on to this one. Then. This is a Muscat Severet Maine. Mm -hmm. It sounds kind of a strange thing to say, but it's from Loire, mm -hmm. and it's a lovely, um, light, fresh. Again, very, very um, lots of peach and apricot notes mm, to it. Nice. Really easy drinking.
thinking these are just great patio sippers for mm -hmm. this time of year mm -hmm. for sure. Okay. We have a little Ontario um, Videl Muscato made by Henry of Pelham. Um, it's a lovely wine. It's got a little bit of off dry um, character to it. So it's not real dry, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. it does have a lovely floral note and mm -hmm. really nice with chicken or a pasta and a cream sauce because you get that little bit of sweetness, oh, okay. which okay. will be really nice. Okay. And then the little wine at the end is a Tarantes, huge trend right now. That wine, um, the Tarantes grape is from Argentina mm -hmm. and we're starting to see more and more of that grape variety overtaking Pinot Grigio. Really? Yes, it's, um, it's really aromatic. It's um, it's a much more floral than Pinot Grigio, okay. mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. So yep, you get I a do. nice floral note to it on the nose, on the palate. You get nice aromatic uh, or nice, um, lovely sweet, not sweet, but kind of soft fruit flavored mm -hmm. character, and still that acidity to balance. So great expression, really well balanced. Now, are you finding that um, you know if you're saying that that's kind of competing with Pinot Grigio? Is Pinot Grigio kind of the the sort of the it white wine Pin for women in general, yeah, that's where they Pinot come. Grigio tends to be the go-to wine. Yeah. The Pinot Grigio is now made everywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. It comes from Italy, um, but it does have, it tends to be very, very different, no matter, like, depending on which kind of Pinot Grigio you're that's buying. That's what I find, If you're yeah. buying Pinot Grigio from California, say, you're getting a lot softer style, more okay. fruit. Uh -huh. If you're buying a Pinot Grigio from Italy, you're getting more acidity. But you have to keep that's in mind that acidity is very important with food because you need the acid. To Especially if you're eating through. fats, right? Yes. If you're even having fat. Yes. And I think, okay, so people are looking at these wines, and that's the thing, a lot of times, you know, as you're going along, you're saying, oh, this would be better with fruit, this one would be better with seafood, this would be better chicken. Uh, that's where people get confused, too. So, that's so even right. if they can decipher, what type of grape it is, where you know the, the flavor profile. It's still hard for people to, do, to really figure out what do Go, I pair this what do with? I pair it with. So that's where I guess you know someone like you floating around the store comes in yes. handy. Okay, I am having people over to my house, and I am doing this. Then you can kind of say it, that's the best way to do it. If you're having a dinner party, come in with your menu. Let you talk to one of us. Mm -hmm. We will be so happy to help you and make that meal perfect. And I think that's what people forget is that you guys are there. You, you know, you know your stuff. You know, they really ask you because yes. you're. It's very much very personal. Yeah, and instead of just running to the aisle and grabbing a Chardonnay from Australia, mm -hmm. come and talk to us because there's so many lovely wines out there that yes. you may not know that you're about to discover. Well, that's the thing. Like I can sit down with my mom and we'll have. You know, we're having white, and she's. You know. I, she knows that she she doesn't like the oak in Chardonnay, but she doesn't understand what that means. Right. So a lot of times people are drinking a white Chardonnay and they don't they understand why they don't like and it. And then they don't like it because it's oaky, but their Chardonnay can be aged in oak, aged in stainless steel. Yeah. It can be aged sur lee, which is made to rest on the le yeasty lees to mm -hmm. give it a spritziness. Right. Or it can be um, barrel fermented. So there's lots of different ways. So, so to lots say you of don't questions like to ask, so go. Oh. Mill Crop del Cibio. Thank you, Jillian. You're All right, that's welcome. it. More chair at home after this. Where color lives. You've sat under them and built forts in them. You've swung from them and fell out of them. You've even fallen in love under them. Trees have always held a special place in our hearts and memories. A natural beauty, trees will grow with you and your family and bring color and nature into your world. For your assurance of quality, look for trees and shrubs with the medallion plant tag. Medallion plant locally grown, the pride of Niagara. Heritage Perennials, look for us in the blue pots. Good morning, welcome back to Terra at Home. We are in Dundas today, inside of Christina Kirkwood's home. Thank you for letting us in here. And Thanks of course, you are an artist. Yes. And uh, lots of different uh, mediums that you use, but mm -hmm. um, let's talk a little bit about uh, sort of how you got started. I mean, usually when, as an artist, um, it sort of comes, even from as a child, you are interested in things and it starts to develop and change along the way. So let's talk a little bit where it all came from. 
Well, even as a very young child, you mm -hmm. could give me a paper and a pencil and I'd be happy for hours. You know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I used to go to work sometimes with my parents because we always had family businesses, uh -huh. and they were great, grateful that I could just go in the corner go. and draw. <laughs> but that's yeah. a great thing, because yeah. I wish my boy would do that, and he doesn't, so yeah. I don't think he's got that in him. <laughs> so you've had that in you, and then sort yeah. of, as you say, as you as you start to age and you get into high school and you get into college, and you sort of kind of find a more interest in you. So what do you like to work with? I've developed over the years. I, I you know, when I was younger, it was all about drawing for me, and everything mm -hmm. was about making it look like everything exact as it could be drafted so out, that kind of thing. Yep. But, you know, I've been doing this a long time, and mm -hmm. now I'm very, you know, moved by natural things. Mm -hmm. Things that I, you know, we're fascinated by that we pick up from the ground. Like, everybody picks up rocks on the beach yes. and shells on the beach. People do and have that natural <laughs> fascination. Isn't it true? It's you, amazing you how you many people them. do, yeah. And we collect them all, and, mm -hmm. and for some reason, there's something about that object that mm -hmm. draws you to it. And, you know, a lot of artists will take those objects, make a nice little still life and paint it. And mm -hmm. I, I was doing that for a while, but and I kind of got this idea that I really just want that object to always be on display. Right. So right. I kind of just develop ways of incorporating them into the art. And so. that's the part, is incorporating. So that's mm -hmm. where the real talent starts to come in, too, mm -hmm. is how do you take this and it's turn problem it into... Solving. <laughs> yeah, I think that's probably what it is, because you really yeah. have to take a look. And I, I absolutely fell in love with your lamps when mm -hmm. we walked in. And you have a couple different styles. Yeah. Um, but to, to uh, what was that paper that you used to? There, I just used some handmade Japanese papers. The Japanese papers. Yeah. I love that. So, yeah. again, with proper techniques and, uh, and manipulation, and you just create these beautiful lamps that look like almost like this big petals coming out of natural forms. Natural ideally, forms. very organic. Yeah. You know, and everything is, you know, you have to understand structures and balance to do that. It's, it's sculpting. Mm -hmm. So, you sure, know, you can't is. just, you know, decide I'm going to stick this here and the, that mm -hmm. there and then it falls over. Right, right. <laughs> And, and so, then, of course, and yeah. then you're you're also like hardwiring these things and making them yeah, work. Yeah, yes. So it involves electricity. You have to and allow for the wire in the bulb. Mm -hmm. I know. I try to keep that part as simple as possible. Yeah, that's right. Just mm -hmm. keep it straightforward. But again, just so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And now, what else do you do besides the that? We, again, you're getting into um, pieces of actual art that people can put up on their walls. Mm -hmm. That again, involving natural pieces. Yes, I try to um, embed. Uh, uh, shells, pebbles, mm -hmm. branches, driftwood into my paintings as well mm -hmm. or I, I create assemblages with the driftwood and make them for wall hanging. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know but I find different ways to incorporate them and I, te I tend to always like to add just some more of the unexpected elements mm -hmm. uh, either copper wire or gilding just different things that I juxtapose to those natural elements to yeah. give them a little bit more emphasis and so when you're when you're walking about wherever you are you must just constantly be looking and constantly have, picking things up I have a very large dog we walk every day twice yeah. a day through the woods and yes I have big pockets on do your friends bring you things too <laughs> oh oh yes I, 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 I've been bringing you big, a big piece of driftwood and saying here I had like a friend it. just drop off a bucket of driftwood on my yeah. porch the other day that's I don't great know, though don't know who came from but thank you really oh, isn't that awesome <laughs> but I think that's so fantastic because again that's that's where it all comes from you yep. that's where you're being inspired and 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 hey that stuff's free how cool is that yeah <laughs> yeah right mm -hmm. okay so let's tie this all into you have other friends in this community we know that Dundas is very much an artsy community yes it is. obviously the pottery as well as a big strong one but uh, the Dundas uh, studio tours is huge it's been running for many many years now and uh, they're in, in October beginning of October always and the weekend before Thanksgiving yes yeah, so, so that's always a good tip sometimes it moves around so right yeah right so and we love it it's such a beautiful time of year to be coming down through Dundas because it is oh, the, the colors and everything are right lovely Gardens and it's still look fun. beautiful yeah. Okay, so let's talk about what someone would do on the average studio tour. Well, the studio tour within Dundas mm -hmm. is, first of all, downtown Dundas is gorgeous, so mm -hmm. you know, you've got every amenity you can imagine, so if you're coming from out of town, it's a great day out. You mm -hmm. know, you just mm -hmm. plan to spend the whole day and stop somewhere for lunch, because there's lots of opportunity for that. Right. We have seven studio stops on the tour. They're a little more spread out. There should be actually one studio in Waterdown for the first time. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah. okay. So, but that's not too far. No, still it's not close. too far. Right. Like, nothing's more than a five-minute drive. Exactly. You know, and then yeah. there's a few that you can just walk around to as well. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so let's talk about some of the pieces that that um, we have some on display here in the table mm -hmm. um, that uh, that people would uh, have a little bit of a little, little sneak peek into. Sure, sure. Well, like I was saying, our first studio on the tour is in Waterdown this year, and it's mm -hmm. our one of our longtime Potter members. Mm -hmm. He's going to be in his home, Jonathan Harper. Mm -hmm. And that's his lovely little teapot there. Oh, that's so cute. It's very creative. Mm -hmm. And again, we were talking about the strength of pottery in this region. And oh, yes. It's, it's, yes. You know, we have some of the, we have world renowned yes. potters in this region, which yes. is it's fabulous. Mm -hmm. 
but we're starting to have a lot more fine artists on the tour I, I was you know one of the few at the beginning but you know I've brought some friends along that's great yeah and so Lois Shaw know, look at that that's amazing she has those beautiful pairs there yeah. and that she'll be just across Sydenham from me it's a beautiful painting. so you could actually walk between our two studios oh, which is great? great yeah yes that's so nice and uh, so continuing on. Well, we, I have some guests in my studio this mm -hmm. year, some fabulous glass artists. The first one here with the beautiful flowers and the purpley bowl is Kelly Lowell. And a lot of people might know Kelly because she's a local Hamilton girl and yes. she gave out the ham the glass hammer awards. Yeah, that's yeah. right. I'm thinking, <laughs> yeah. how do I know that name? Yeah. But that's mm -hmm. what it is. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, fabulous so nice. glass blower. Um, and then I also have uh, Leslie winemaker who does these fun lampwork glass oh, which is wow. a completely different kind of glass where you're you're working with a torch and you know yes I've seen yeah. this stuff before too it's really creative and really mm -hmm. fun and whimsical kind of isn't it yeah a yeah, lot of yeah yeah I love that that's really great so again this is what so people are walking into so when when someone comes to your your studio mm -hmm. they're they're welcomed in to come in now people can people purchase at that time oh yes yes, yes. everything okay. on the tour is for sale mm -hmm. um, and there's uh, a lot of the artists are welcome to take commissions as well. Some of the That's works, wondering. if you okay. needed, like we even have woodworkers and different sure. mediums. Like if there's something you needed, they might consider doing it to spec. Okay. I know I'm good with that. So right. um, I tend to be fine with working on commission pieces. Okay, so. isn't that nice? Yeah. Yeah. Keeps you busy though, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> I know you have some current deadlines as we speak, yes. and that and that just as an artist, that's a lot of pressure, right? Because you're you're being creative, but yes, you have yes. a, you have a deadline, and somebody wants some, and, and they want it to look fantastic. Yeah, of course they do. So, yes, yeah, yes. that's awesome. Okay, so obviously we're looking a little bit ahead here to October to the studio tours, mm -hmm. but again, the whole part of it is there's always a theme. There is this right. year. It's called Seeing Stars. So oh. if, if you notice, that's why we have the galaxy here. Oh, that's and so cute. Yes. Yeah, so we're, we and you kind of tie everything around that, We try right? to tie it in. We yeah. usually have some goodies on the tour, some yes. snacks. And yeah, I love that. usually those recipes are somehow related to the theme. And that's you can right. find all those recipes on our website. Yeah, but I really like how it's really developed over the years. I've kind of been part of this, you know, in and out over the years and seeing how it's really developed and everyone's coming on board. And it's such mm -hmm. a community base, right? Mm -hmm. It's just a really... You know. Well, you know, it's a fun community, Dundas, and we're yeah. we're really grateful to have so much talent in one yes. place. Yeah, and so we encourage people to go on the website. It's dundasstudiotours.ca, I believe, right? Is it .ca? <laughs> Yeah, and so people can go on and take a look and, and I mean, experience. It's yeah. just a really fun out, fun outing for a full day. Yeah, and you can pick up a brochure map. Um, any of our uh, downtown businesses all have them as well. Okay. Thank in, you, you know, find your way around. Awesome. Good Thanks. stuff. Beautiful work. All right, Thank that's you. it for now. We'll have more chair at home. where color lives. AM 900 CHML is giving you more news when you want it most. Non-stop news weekday mornings 5 till 9, weekday afternoons 3 to 6, with weather and traffic on the 9s. Hear about it first from AM 900 CHML, Hamilton's news talk leader. Welcome back to Tara at Home. We're in the Tara Kitchen today, and we're here with Chef Rachel. Yes. And uh, of course, being summertime, uh, we are putting together some nice summer recipes. So, yes. what are we making today? Today, we're going to do some steak fajitas. Oh, yum! We're going to make them smoky, in flavor, okay. and um, pair it with a chipotle lime aioli. We call it. This all sounds really good. Yeah, so we're a, a little excited. twist <laughs> on your regular regular fajitas. Right? Okay. We'll just add a, a little bit of a different flavor to them. So I have a small pan here just heating up. I want this to be nice and hot and I'm going to saute the vegetables. So I always start with a couple different kinds of pepper okay. and some white onion. And uh, that's usually the base of my fajita. Mm -hmm. So uh, 
Let's give this See a test. See your vegetables first, and then the meat. Yeah. <laughs> ready to go? Yeah, so I'll just make sure that that's all ready. There we go. Some white onion. If I could get you to put that off sure. to the side. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, so basically I just let those sit uh, for a couple minutes because I want them to get nice and nice and dark and brown. Mm -hmm. That's how I like mine. So I actually just don't touch them for a bit and then we'll flip them and ah. do the same on the other side. Okay. So we can kind of just forget about those uh, and we can talk about the steak. <clears throat> so I chose to do steak. Mm -hmm. This is just a strip loin that I've cut up into thin strips. Mm -hmm. Okay, but you can use chicken too or you can make a shrimp. So any kind of protein that you like, if you want to add protein, uh, this recipe will work for. Okay. So I put in a little bit of oil, we'll put in a little bit more. And you can marinate this overnight if you mm -hmm. want. Um, mm -hmm. We're just gonna do it, it quick now. But uh, this is a, a cut of meat that you don't really need to marinate anyways. The strip loin is basically ready for Sorry, frying or grilling. Yeah. Um, okay. But if you get um, a less tender cut of meat, then you wanna let it marinate mm -hmm. overnight. Because <clears throat> that kind of breaks down some of the tissues a little bit in the meat and then yes. softens it and makes it edible, right? Yes, exactly. Okay. All right, great. Exactly. So, I've made a mixture of different spices here. So I have them over in the corner here. I've got my uh, my uh, garlic powder from mm -hmm. home there. Uh, smoked paprika, some cayenne, some red pepper flakes. And so I've mixed that all together with a little bit of salt and pepper. And that's going to be my my spice. I actually put a little bit of chopped up jalapeno in there too okay. that I had left over. Okay. And so we'll just uh, do it in a couple batches just to make sure that it smells. <clears throat> It all gets there. Mm, yeah, that's, that's got some good. Yeah, so it's got a little bit of spice to it too. I'm going to mm -hmm. add in some chipotle peppers as well, mm -hmm. and uh, and a little bit of this. So you can get this at the at the local grocery store, and it's called liquid smoke. And if you're using it, you only really want to just use a little bit, like yeah. a very little bit. Because you don't want to overwhelm the flavor with the smoke. It's very no. powerful, very potent, right? It is. And when I mm -hmm. say a little bit, we're talking you know less than a teaspoon. So yes. very minute. Um, but it's just going to give a little bit of that smoky flavor. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we'll just do... Would have, without having to go through the smoking process. Exactly. Right, so. so a couple drops okay. is so all you really need. We'll mix it up. Yeah, Whoop. like you said, we don't want to overpower it. We smoky. just want to add in a little extra flavor there. Cool. Okay, let me just check these. <laughs> all right. So I can see the onions there are starting to get a little brown. So we want those to be nice and soft. Okay. Uh, okay, we can add a little bit more of this and then we'll add in some chopped chipotles. So the chipotles come uh, usually in a small can like this and it's chipotles in, in the adobo sauce. Mm -hmm. And so it's a, it's a lot of sauce. So I, I like to use both. I like to use some of the sauce and chop it up, mm -hmm. keep the seeds in there. So okay. a little bit of everything. It's really great with a can like this because often you're not going to be able, even, even as small as the can is, you don't get around to using all of it, but you mm -hmm. can just freeze that. I've done that before and you can, it totally unthaws and you can use it. Mm -hmm. Easily, right? yeah, totally thaws. Yeah. So, so basically, that's uh, that's the marinade done, and uh, when the vegetables okay. are done, we can take them out and we can fry the steak in, in that pan yeah, there too. Smells good already. Okay. So very good. Okay. So we have that ready there. Thank yep. you. Okay. Next. Next. We'll serve it with a little bit of a sauce on top. And so I like to call this chipotle lime aioli. Mm -hmm. Aioli is a nice uh, is a nice fancy way of basically saying like a mayonnaise. Mayo. Yeah. So I always use the term aioli because it sounds Those Italians. They make everything sound so much sounds better. <laughs> <laughs> so you can make your own mayonnaise if you're feeling like you're you're really um, into it, mm -hmm. uh, or you can just use the store bought mayonnaise. And what I do is I mix in chipotle. So I I do this a lot. I I do it for my sweet potato fries and my crab cakes. Mm -hmm. And so. It's something that's very versatile. You can mix anything in there. Yeah. Do garlic aioli or a lemon aioli. So in this in this case, I'm going to put some of this chopped chopped chipotles in. Okay. And some lime juice, a little bit of lime zest. You can put a, a tiny bit of salt and pepper in there as well, and uh, it'll be a nice accompaniment. Yes. On the, it will. Instead of using your traditional sour cream or yeah. salsa. I agree. The good thing about this is you can use light mayonnaise and it doesn't really taste any different at all. Yes, right? you would never so, know the difference, yeah. especially when you're mixing it with mm -hmm. these flavors. So a little bit of uh, pepper and a touch of salt. The chipotles are a little salty too, so okay. you don't need too much. And then we'll squeeze a little bit of lime juice in there. And I'll use my zester to put some fresh lime zest in as well. Okay. So you get some more of the flavor there. Mm. 
is all coming together. It smells great. And then when we actually put it in the tortillas, I'm going to accompany it with um, a little bit of Asiago cheese, okay. some chopped tomato, and we can put some fresh avocado slices. I love using avocado in the, I know, in the summertime. I know, me too. I find any excuse to use avocado on anything. And it's really good for us, too, right? Yep. So. Yeah, so I see. So you're actually kind of like almost like charring up the, the vegetables a little bit there. That yes. gives it that flavor. That's a good idea. Yeah, so that's how I like to do it. Yeah. Um, personally. And I don't like them too, too crunchy. So I just let them sit until they're nice and dark. And uh, mm. they don't take very yeah, long at all. Yeah, that gives it really cool flavor. So again, you're adding to that to that um, real nice, dark, like smoky kind of grilled flavor mm -hmm. to it. The whole thing is just coming together. Nice. Okay. Yes, and again, you're talking about grilled. Mm -hmm. Of course, if you if you had access to the barbecue outside, to do any of this stuff on the grill would be sure. just as easy. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So you could actually mm. take a full, the full strip loin and grill it, and then sure. and then slice it afterwards, and right? So if you could marinate that and then slice it, in, right? And then yes. put it in. Yeah. Okay. Marinate okay. it whole. So that's always good, especially for this time of year, right? Yeah, it was zest fresh in lime zest. So. Okay. So basically, at this point, we're at the uh, the final stages. So what mm -hmm. we'll do is we'll take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll put it all together. And I cannot wait to try. Thanks. Yum. All right, we'll be back. where color lives. Good morning, welcome back to Tara at Home and uh, finishing up our uh, fajitas mm -hmm. today. Now, totally seasoned and flavored, really, really full of flavor. Yes. Now, again, yes. we've added uh, some really good, some smoke, mm. some liquid smoke and chipotle in there to really intensify the, the steak. Yes, right. yeah, and just some spices that were in the cupboard. Yep. Um, after the vegetables were done, I transferred them to a bowl and then just, I just did the steak in the same mm -hmm. pan. Okay. Um, yeah, so the steak obviously doesn't take very long. I want to make sure that it's all cooked throughout and then we're ready to assemble. <laughs> all right. So we'll start with our, uh, our chipotle lime aioli mm -hmm. and put a little bit of that on the bottom. I always like to start with uh, a little bit of a base, but we can put some on top too because it's so good. And these are actually whole wheat um, they are. shells, aren't they? Yeah. Which is nice. I try to stay with the whole wheat yeah, in my can. as well. You actually don't even notice the difference. Not really. I don't. <laughs> my brother believes that there's a huge difference between <laughs> white and whole wheat. whole wheat, but really, once you put all really? this stuff in. <laughs> you just put mayo all over it. It's going to taste way better. <laughs> so I like to put a little bit of greens down as well. Again, keeping with that whole base for our, yeah. the rest of our ingredients. Well, again, because you have some sauteed vegetables and then you have fresh vegetables, so just, again, it's giving a texture and it's mm -hmm. healthy. So then we can put our sauteed peppers and onions. They're nice and dark. So just a reminder of, of course, as uh, Chef Rachel's putting together our fajitas here, that you can find all of our Rachel's recipes on our website at terragreenhouses.com and uh, lots of good summer ones to come out as we make our way through, so you'll have to stay tuned. Yep. We so all can't wait to try these. They smell so good. Smoky steak on top. Everyone that's coming through the store is stopping. <laughs> What's she making? Sounds so good. It smells so good. There we go. And then we can top it off with our tomatoes, our cheese, a little bit of fresh avocado if you like. Mm -hmm. Some awesome. more of that delicious sauce. Beautiful. There we go. And just do what you need to do, what you like, and uh, make it your own. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thanks so much, Chef Rachel. Thank that's you. That's it. Try these tonight. Have yourself a great weekend. See you again.